Hi folks, it's good to be with you today. Uh, we're sharing the Word of God and uh, we were looking at Isaiah 53. And in the book of the Bible, Isaiah 53, it talks about that Jesus Christ is to buy a Saviour. It says, He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon Him, by His stripes we are healed. And it's the desire of the Father to bring reconciliation for us. He wants us to bring reconciliation. The Apostle Paul talks about this reconciliation. And uh, I'm going to read that in 2 Corinthians. So let's look at the Word of God. Paul says we are in 1 Corinthians, sorry, chapter 4, verse 10. He says, we are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honourable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labour, working with our own hands, being re reviled, we blessed, being persecuted, we suffering, being defeated, we, we entreated, we are made as the filth of the world and have the offscouring of all things unto this day. For though we have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. I have begotten you through the gospel. And Paul went around the ancient world and he preached in Ephesus. He preached uh, in Athens. He preached all around the ancient world. And Paul's message, Paul's profound message was that Jesus Christ was crucified, that crucified the Messiah. That was Paul's message and that message shook the world and it's God's desire that you be reconciled to him. And you have to understand that there's been a separation from God, that we're all separated from God. And that separation is sin. Sin, S-I-N, sin. Sin is any want of conformity to the law of God. That's what sin is. Sin is the breaking of the law. And all of us break the law. You know, if you go past the traffic lights, and the traffic lights says uh, red, you just stop. But if you go past the red light, and a police car sees you, that police car will arrest you. And the traffic lights, are the Ten Commandments, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery. And uh, honor your father and mother, honor the Sabbath day, don't have any other gods before me. These are the traffic lights of God. And we go past these traffic lights, we break these traffic lights. We, we, we break the commandments of God. And we lie, we steal, we commit adultery, and we commit all these sins. And we break the law of God. Have you broken the law of God? Have you broken that law? Have you lied? Have you stolen? Have you committed adultery? Have you worshipped any other gods but the living God? Have you used the Lord's name in vain? These are the commandments of God. And if we break these commandments, the Bible says, all fall short of the glory of God. And if you've broken the commandments of God, you, the Bible says, are a sinner. S I N sin and sinner we're all sinners and we all break the law of god we all do things wrong we all come under the judgment of god and we can't escape that judgment that's a real judgment where one day at the end of time god will bring every evil thought every evil action to judgment he's going to bring every evil wicked thought every evil sin that man has done god is going to judge it and he's going to judge it with his holiness. The holiness of God, the fire of God. God will judge every wicked thought, every evil thought. He will judge it. And there'll be no mercy about that. He'll be righteous and holy and just in his judgment. But God has shown compassion. God has shown mercy. God has shown grace. God has shown love. God has shown the blessing. The blessing of his son. 
And the Son of God came down from heaven. And there, when he hung on that cross, he took the filth, the mess of the, the world upon his back. He took the mess, the filth, the sin, the judgment upon his back. And he took the wrath that you deserve. He took it upon his own body, dying on that cross. He took the punishment for you and the wrath and the sin, the judgment upon himself. The wrath was poured upon him, the Bible says. It says we're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That means peace from the wrath of God. The wrath of God will not touch us. The wrath of God will not send us to hell if we come under the banner of Jesus Christ to know that Christ shed his blood. And time is running out. Time is running out. Time is running out. You will die one day. And when you die, when you die, you have to face God. When you die, you have to face the judgment. When you die, which will happen, you will die one day. When you die, it's not the end. You'll face the judgment. You'll face the judgment of God. And you have to give an account for what you've done. But you can be saved today by knowing that Jesus saved you. By knowing that Jesus gave his life for you. Do you believe that, brother? Do you believe he died for you? Are you a believer in Jesus? Do you believe Christ died for you? Why don't you believe Christ died for you? Okay, okay, okay. So. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you're a Muslim, and I respect that, respect, yeah? But, but, are your sins forgiven today? Are your sins forgiven today? Are your sins forgiven today? As a Muslim, can you say that your sins are forgiven today? So your sins not dealt with. And we believe in, in 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. It says this. If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you can have your sins forgiven. Do you know why? Because Jesus died on your behalf, bro. He died on your behalf. Instead of God punishing you, Jesus died for you on that cross. He gave his life for you, bro. Okay, so you don't believe he died. You don't believe he died. Okay. Isaiah 53, brother. Now the the Jews the Jews are taught not to read this. It's in the Old Testament. If they read it, they say it's Israel. Now you say Jesus didn't die. Let's listen to this. Okay. Let's listen to this. This is in, in the Holy Scriptures, Isaiah. He all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is down. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison, from judgment, and he shall declare the generation, for he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he was made the grave with the wicked and with the rich in death, because he had done no violence, neither was deceit in his mouth. Here it is now. Are you ready? Yet he pleased the Lord to bruise him, and he put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. So his soul was an offering for sin. That's what the Bible says. So when Jesus died on that cross, 
He was an offering for you, my friend. Okay, very good point, very good point. But what evidence do you have he did not die? I have evidence he died, I'll give you evidence. Number one, number one. Evidence now. Eyewitnesses. Mary, Jesus' mum, saw him die. The soldier saw him die. Now, then you have uh, Tacitus and Josephus, people who did not like Jesus said he died. So we have tons of evidence, brother, that he died. And, and the thing is that you know John the Baptist, you know him. He was a great prophet, yeah? When he saw Jesus, he said this Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, my friend. So he's the Lamb that died for you. You're so nice. Will you think about that? That Christ is the Lamb that died for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I agree. Good to see you. So, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus is the one that took away your sin. He's the one that takes away for you. And that's the only way. You can, you can bop and dop. You can play guitars. You can dance. All day you can uh, play drums, you can do all, the, all that stuff. But if you don't know Jesus, you missed it, bro. You've got to know Jesus. I do. Do you know him? Yeah, he's my best mate. Yeah, you come, wait, do you come to, you're, you're born again, brother. No, I look at Jesus as a guy, but the Bible, what is it? The, the Bible, so the Bible's a way to live your life. And God... No, I just think that is how you live your life. Okay. But what about those words there? Jesus said that. Yeah, for God so no, and, and you're Jesus, in them. Go. Jesus didn't say that John wrote it. Okay, let me finish, let me finish, and then and then we'll go. I say Jesus, you say John. Right? What is it? He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's believing in Jesus, bro. I mean, do you do you, do you like honey? Yeah, do you like honey? Sorry. But imagine someone was arguing with you about honey. You could say you've tasted it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that if you believe in Jesus, you taste the presence of God. You know his presence. Yeast as well. Yeast. Yeast. Vegetation. Anything. It's like what happens to your body when you die. Go into the ground, yes, yes, and then you dissolve, and that enriches life. I understand all that. You know? Well, Jesus says, I have the resurrection and the life, and He wants you to have a new life. He wants you to have peace. You can have it right now. No, but this is a peace that passes all understanding, a peace of joy. I said, all I can say is, if you stand there and you protect people and don't give a fuck about someone else, and they're putting you on I just believe God. Way you live your life is to do good to people. Oh, okay. that I understand that. I understand that. I understand. But here's the question. It's a good point what you're saying. But what do you think of Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ to you? Someone I've read about the book. I've read many of books and I've read many of Name me the greatest general. How do you get your voice to pick on that? Because <laughs> you've got to go close like that. Go close. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Who was? Do you reckon was the greatest general that ever lived? General. General. Yeah. I don't know. Are who? You, are you like no, no. Who? Who was the greatest politician that ever lived? Politician. Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> who do you think was the greatest painter that ever lived? Walter well, Sicker. Who do you think was the greatest musician that ever lived? Me. All right. Now, Jesus never made any music. No, he never, he never right? made any to be the best Let me just say this He never made any music, but he's more famous than any musician. He never led an army, but he's more famous than any general. He never, he never wrote a book, but he's more famous than any writer. No, Jesus 
is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And if we've missed him, we've missed everything. Bro. What, what gives you the greatest joy? Alright, alright. But the greatest joy that I get and he gets and he gets is knowing Jesus. Because knowing Jesus, you get to know the Father through Jesus. And that's what he wants for you. If I give you a hundred pounds on your birthday as your best mate, would you take it? hundred pounds? Yeah. Well, I just got 50 for my birthday, so I'm right old, yeah? Well, it's my birthday in a few days, so you can get me some present, yeah? Right, it's the uh, 26. 29? 29, right. So if I give you a hundred pounds on your birthday, would you take it? If your kidney was packing up, and my kid, and my, one, of, one of my kidneys could help you, would you take it? Would you take it? Okay. You're, you're nice to talk to, I like you, I like that we're having a good conversation. Here's the point, God has given you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, he's given you his son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If your kidney's packed up and my kidney can help you, and I offer my kidney, you take it. Well God... That's brilliant, that's brilliant. But God is, is giving you his son and he's offering it to you freely so that you can have eternal life. But you've got to open your heart, just like if I give you a hundred pound in a car and you open the car, get the dosh. Well, that's, that's all I'm thinking. It's opening your heart. There, so that message of loving and understanding people, it's for you to take it and do it. I, I, I agree about and, and obviously you're doing it because you're still there doing it but I, I agree about the love that's spot on I don't disagree with that that's good but I what, in someone, but what I'm saying is like rest in and believing in Jesus as your saviour that's the key yeah, well, does yeah. that mean that I can smoke weed? you got to seek you got to seek the Lord on that mate you got to seek the Lord all right. I'm sure he if, would have smoked if, if you're, if you're addicted, you any, anything that you're addicted to, anything you're addicted to is not good. But the point is, the point is, it's the you're relationship. Don't tell me they didn't smoke that. No, right then. Come on. The main issue, the main issue, the main issue is relationship. It, God wants you to know so you here, that you, because, because right, I'll tell you a story. There was this guy on the on the street, yeah, and he was homeless. And this pastor went up to him and gave him some. Books, yeah, and that's like right? the, yeah. um, the old book where it's like they turn the cheek. But to guess what happened? You know what I mean? There was someone who got assaulted and they turned the cheek. Turned right, the cheek. Right. And you know what I mean? No, you, you read yeah, it. Not yet. Me. But, but this is the story. So he gets, he gets these sandwiches to this homeless guy. Anyhow, a few, a few years later, he gets a knock on the door and a letter given to him. The guy who was homeless was actually a millionaire. And he left all his money to the pastor who gave him that food. Now the point is, the, mil the homeless guy didn't realise he was a millionaire. And in a way, me and you and our people, we're walking in this world. We don't realise how special we are before God. And what I, my job and our job here today is to tell you, you're so special that the Son of God died for you. When he was on that cross, have you ever lied? Yeah. Well, instead of God punishing you for your lies. Jesus stood in your place. So when he had a crown of thorns on his head, let me just finish, and he's nailed to that cross, he's dying for the whole world and for you, bro. Yeah, but I also took it out on myself, all my doubts and that, you know what I mean? So, so he, he, he man me have suffered, you know what I mean? Like, all yeah. my, because I, 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 I'm tuition to be nice, you know what I mean? So any lie I've done, I take it out on myself, so I didn't want him to do that. I didn't ask him to. He's the son of God, man. Yeah, no, no, no. He's the son of God and he has a right to, and he so did do. So will you believe him? Will you trust him? Because I've got to shoot me. Will, 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 will you trust him as your Lord and Savior? Yeah, I believe him. Well, do you want to pray now and say, Lord, I give my heart to you? What? Do you, you want to do that? Okay. Right, I'm going to have to meet okay, you. Okay. Nice to meet you, Father. Right, God bless you. Yeah, and whatever I pray, you just say it in your heart. And then if you mean it in your heart, you become a child of God. So you just say it in your heart. Dear Lord, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. But Lord, I know that you loved me and died for me. So Lord, please forgive me. 
Come into my life and be my saviour. And I give you my life, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you, if you pray that prayer, you're now a child of God. Okay. Now, when you see me, we'll come and have Bible study together. I'll buy you a coffee and we'll do some studies. Maybe on Friday if you're around. We'll just go into Costco and I'll buy you a cup of coffee. And we'll Bible study and then we'll connect you with the church or you can come to my house. You're okay. No, 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 no.